Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. A warm welcome to all of you to day two of Gasification India 2020 Virtual Conference. I'm your host, Anisha Nayar Thapan. We also have a running panel in the Waste to Energy Conference in Hall 2. Now, a day earlier, we had the chance to hear from industry leaders about their views on how coal commercialization is going to prove to be a game changer and make this viable and profitable venture. We will be using fossil fuels which we have in abundance without impacting our carbon footprint and become atmanirbhar in energy security. Now today we will uh, further delve into various aspects of gasification projects, how to develop a methanol and hydrogen economy with gasification, and how the future of chemicals and synthetic fuels is being impacted with gasification. Do keep in mind, uh, we have an expo going on on this virtual conference. Uh, so do make uh, best use of all the breaks and the time that you have uh, to visit the expo where you will find the providers of technology, equipment, and solutions for gasification uh, with their offerings, and you can meet them and consult them. We also have a, a, a launch where you can network uh, with your peers and make sure you use all the facilities which are available on this virtual platform to make the most of these uh, two days. Now, we would also like to thank our sponsors who have supported us this year to make gasification and waste energy content a big success. We would like to thank our title sponsor, Air Products, our principal sponsors, General C and Bar and Wuhan Engineering. Our barring sponsors, Reliance Industries, Coal India, Indian Corporation, our supporting sponsors, namely Ignite and Face Pro. A big thank you to our associate sponsors, Oman Scarth and Dave Energy, and Johnson Chemicals, our session sponsors. So let's get started with the first session today. The topic of our first panel discussion today is gasify 100 million ton coals by 2030. Is this a way forward for Atmanirbhar Bharat? Now, one way through which India can overcome the crude dependence it has is to turn coal, um, is to use coal liquidation, also called coal to liquid, uh, and an alternative route to produce diesel and, and gasoline. And they can also be used as additives uh, to uh, diesel and gas, uh, uh, in diesel and petrol to reduce the dependence that we have on imports. So has the time come for last day coal liquidation now? Uh, to discuss this, uh, please welcome our esteemed panelists who will be making their comments and discussing this issue. Uh, please welcome uh, Anuradha Ganesh, Chief Technical Advisor and Director at Cummins Technology India, Mr. Partha Bhattacharya, former chairman, Coal India Limited, Mr. Uh, Nitin Karvekar, Vice President, Reliance Industries Limited, uh, Mr. Rahul George, Country Manager, K Strip, Dr. Clifford Mallet, Technical Director, Carbon Energy, and Mr. Anand Stewart, your Managing Director, Air Products India. A warm welcome to all of you. Um, I see Anuradha Ma'am also, has also logged in, and we are very, very um, excited to have all of you on this discussion. So uh, let me start this discussion uh, and uh, come to you first, um, Anuradha Ma'am. Uh, do you think uh, coal liquefaction could be the answer to, you know, reduce our dependence uh, on the oil imports that we have, which we do not produce abundantly? We do not produce either crude or even gas, natural gas, abundantly uh, domestically. So, could uh, you know, coal liquefaction be a solution? So actually, this is a very interesting uh, question because it doesn't have one answer. Let me tell you, at least that's what I feel, because it depends on many factors. And it starts from, uh, you know, when we talk about Atmanirbhar Bharat, coal to liquefaction, it talks, it depends on which coal, it depends on which technology, it depends on what are you going to do with the, uh, what is the final product? It is synthesis gas, hydrogen, diesel, liquids, or is it going to be used for energy? Is it going to be used for chemicals? That route has to be done. And then what is the cost at which coal is available and how reliable the technology is? Is the technology indigenous or is it something which we have taken? Is the technology reliable enough for our ash coal? So I think if we are able to, and all these questions are important. And unless we don't have an answer, which, and it can be in any permutation and combination, but if I look at it on using our coal 
at the outset yes i think that's a right path to go but unfortunately unless we do not have all the other parameters in place including uh, i missed out on the carbon dioxide capture and utilization we will not be able to achieve what we want to and what we can that's my comment right um Pahitul, sir i'll come to you now uh, we are we, india has abundant coal reserves and this technology of gasification has been around for many years we still haven't successfully used it on a large scale in our country um you know uh, we're talking about liquefaction coal liquefaction and uh, you know coal gasification is seen to be more uh, you know uh, has lower emissions uh, can we have coal liquefaction now the technology is improved to see that the uh, you know the side effects or the carbon emissions are lower uh thank you see uh it is important to you know make the perspective a little clear before we get into these questions so if you allow me something like 4 to 5 minutes time i can do that should i go ahead yes sir please go ahead see in india coal has been in a long wedlock with power sector an overwhelming share of coal supply stood committed for power generation since 2007 when capacity addition for thermal power rose exponentially the incremental coal produced was almost entirely made available to power sector alone even this was not enough and import of thermal coal witnessed very fast increase in other words the situation was not conducive to consider seriously other applications of coal as feedstock for liquefaction or gasification and production of downstream items now the situation is changing rapidly capacity for generation of renewable power is rising at breakneck pace it has touched 90 gigawatt already and is on its way towards the target of 450 gigawatt by 2030 competition is driving down the solar power tariff steadily as per latest trends it has touched rupees 2 per unit at this tariff it is lower than the tariff from a freshly added thermal capacity in other words coal based capacity addition for power generation beyond those in the pipeline is no longer viable by implication further demand of coal from power sector will be limited to enhanced needs of only the existing and pipeline capacities as and when the plf starts to rise from current lows of 50% plus the financial health of discoms through appropriate policy intervention largely at the state level will determine the future course of this move further this will eventually depend upon the landed cost of coal being competitive and capable of sustaining competition from the following falling renewable tariff the excessive rail freight which in rupees per ton kilometer is one of the highest globally coupled with the gst compensation cess of 400 rupees per ton besides the high rates of state government royalty and revenue share may prove to be major dampness to the process unless rationalized asap in comparison to the muted demand side scenario from power sector further challenged by erosion of competitiveness of landed coal cost the supply side looks buoyant cil is pursuing growth from its current level of 600 million tons to 1 billion ton over the next few years commercial coal mining has already become a reality and should add to domestic coal production in 3 to 4 years time all this makes serious foray into alternative use of coal as feedstock an urgent imperative to push you don't have a option actually coal gasification is a well established avenue for the same coal has been known to be a storehouse of chemicals for decades the sasol plant in south africa built long ago primarily in response to the sanctions on the country is one of the finest global example of putting this knowledge into large scale commercial application i did have an opportunity to visit the plant as part of a government of india delegation and it was an eye opener the company mined its own coal of around 40 million tons per annum and converted the same into oil for transport and other applications plus a host of chemicals in a sustainable and viable manner the coal quality was not the best it was medium Indian coal is predominantly high ash mostly in excess of 40%. Yeah. 
it has to be necessarily washed down to less than 30 percent before being used in gasifiers the syngas produced can be processed further to take out the high value chemicals such as ammonia elemental sulfur phenol etc the sale value of which helps reduce the overall cost and enhances viability the clean gas can be used in many ways, including power generation in an environmentally sustainable manner. The use of the gas in making steel through DRI route has been another application pioneered by JSPL. In this process, the use of coal is holistic and it, it avoids burning out the precious chemicals in coal with associated environmental pollution. Since coal gasification promotes a cleaner use of coal with much reduced emission of greenhouse gas, it can prolong use of coal as a source of energy while enabling the country to meet the climate change commitments. Capture and storage of carbon dioxide generated in the process can further reduce the carbon footprint. Commercial use of the CO2 stored for production of fertilizers or for enhanced oil discovery, etc., can help in improving viability of operations. However, it will definitely require certain incentives from the government to make it viable and profitable for people to enter into this this place if not incentives it should start with removing the disincentive of the gst compensation cess of 400 rupees per ton. that should be the starting point so the renewed thrust on coal gasification by the government and the target of 100 million ton per annum of coal usage through gasification by 2030 which happens to be the subject matter of this of today's discussion and that has been said by the honorable prime minister himself needs to be viewed and appreciated in this context. So concerted efforts of large players, both in private and public sector, can turn the aspiration into reality within the given time frame. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Partisar, for your uh, opening comments. Uh, yes, uh, we have seen coal gasification. Uh, you know, uh, the soil plant is really, um, uh, um, uh, it's a living example of how this can work. But of course, this whole plant has been around for a very long time. Technology changes very fast, and we are making um, great strides in uh, energy uh, reliance with uh, a lot of uh, dependence on uh, renewable energy, where uh, you know the carbon footprint is very low. Uh, now, I want to come to you, uh, uh, Mr. Karvekar. Now, Reliance Industries also has a gasification uh, unit attached to its Jamnagar refinery. Now, uh, we want to understand, you know, while we don't want to depend on um, imports, we want to reduce our imports of oil and gas. Uh, and the prime minister made, uh, has given a target of reducing oil imports. But uh, what has happened over the last three years is that crude oil imports have actually increased. They have increased because the price is also going down. Now, uh, when it comes to, um, you know, self-reliance, should we try to uh, you know go ahead with something that makes the most economic sense should we use uh, the resources uh, that are available locally what should be the way ahead and how important is the government incentive like uh, partners are saying because uh, you know uh, the coal cess was there because uh, you know, it's coal is seen as a dirty fuel and we don't want coal burnt in thermal power uh, stations uh, uh, which increase emissions. So, what kind of incentives would be needed to make this coal gasification or coal liquefaction successful and adopted at scale in our country? Yeah, good morning. Thank you. Uh, I would uh, like to put the uh, energy perspective uh, for coal gasification being uh, now a gasification operator in India since last three years. Uh, we have gone through a long experience and uh, back of uh, behind us was the JSPL who has bring, brought the experience of coal gasification to India. Uh, as uh, Mr. Partha said, the power generation from coal, yes, it, it's a, uh, I don't think it's a, going to be a starter uh, for, from the gasification, power from the gasification. So, our focus should be on the chemicals and the downstream derivatives from the syn gas. Uh, as you spoke about touch the oil import, uh, there is another new uh, value which has been looked from the hydrogen as a fuel replacing the and reducing the oil imports, uh, which can also be a good sustainable uh, 
initiative from the coal gasification uh, you you need to take care of the co2 capture as almost all, every speaker has indicated but uh, if you really want to make this initiative of 100 million tons coal gasification as a success uh, you, you need to focus uh, on the thin gas to chemicals and the fuel part you know which can replace your uh, oil imports and uh, reduce the gas imports our preliminary reliance as a part of further diversification we are looking at a big way on the thin gas to chemicals also uh, considering the current gas prices and the power scenario uh, so we may be diverting part of our uh, fuel thin gas going to power to the chemicals and uh, if you go into the details of economics you are all the chemicals which you can produce from coal gasification are very competitive compared to the natural gas based chemicals okay because you have and only you have a array of chemicals which you can produce from the thin gas because when you generate the thin gas from the coal gasification you can generate a thin gas mixture right from hydrogen by co ratio 0 to hydrogen by co ratio 1 so you have a variety of thin gas composition you can generate which are beneficial for generating whole area of chemicals economically and sustainably so this is the part of the industry perspective now coming to the question of is it a way forward for atmanirbhar bharat uh, i would say it's a really a challenging task what we are looking at because the 100 million ton what we are looking at is almost 50% of the gasification what china has gone into in last 30 40 years and that we are targeting in next 10 years without much uh, experience on the indian front except reliance and jspl so to make it really success i think we need to have a really a uh, plan uh, like what the Ch- we may look at china model like china had announced agenda 21st century when they announced the big way coal gasification with all the initiative how to sustain that how to sustain the transfer to coal gasification and lot of initiatives government had to thought not only just investing for the coal gasification so uh, we really need to look at all other peripheral aspects like what experience reliance has got through this gasification implementation you need so many supportive institutes your research your internal in house developments sustain this initiative just putting coal gasification and depending on for the technologies raw material uh, equipments and other special equipments on outside may not lead to atmanirbhar bharat so it should be a really planned initiative with all other peripheral activities to be looked at when we uh, try to make this as a success but yes i would say paper proper planning can make it a real success not 100 million ton but we may reach to go towards that and we can be at minute that's my views thank you miss dhawan you are on mute uh thank you for your open comments uh, we are very privileged to have with us uh, uh, mr arvi shahi he is the former secretary bar uh, and he is the cmd energy infotech uh, who is now joining us uh, uh, mr shahi is going to moderate the discussion uh, and thank you so much for joining us uh, mr shahi um, so you would have heard what uh, the industry leaders have said uh, part of it said that sasol has successfully had this huge gasification plant Uh, but uh, you know um, we we thought the people are say that you know uh, perhaps the best use for coal is to get chemicals out of it what do you think should be a way forward we have a target of 100 million ton coal gasification by 2030 how realistic is it and can we do can we achieve this target sir i'd like to take your comments as well
Mr. Shai, I request you to please make your comments, sir. Yeah, are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear. Please go ahead. Hello. Mr. Shai, please go ahead. Are you able to hear me? Yes, yes, yes. sir. We can. Okay. Thanks. I, I was a bit late because I had something else to do and therefore I had told uh, that I will be late by about 15-20 minutes. So I have not been uh, able to listen to some of the speeches or some of the addresses that have been made in the past. I could see on the screen Partha there. Partha and uh, I, we have done some work for the power sector together. So I don't know whether he has already spoken and I couldn't hear him. Uh, th this is a very, very important subject that uh, you have chosen. And it's, a, it's, a, it's time has always been there because at least uh, 40 and odd years that I have been associated very directly with the power sector. This subject we have always talked. We talked 40 years back and all these years we have talked about uh, gasification because India is endowed with uh, such an important source of energy coal the 60 percent of India's energy profile about 60 percent of India's energy profile is constituted by coal itself and as you can see that uh, so far as the petroleum fuel whether it is petroleum products or gas that is concerned uh, we are we are a miserable failure in the sense that Crude we import more than 85%, hardly produce less than 15% in India. Gas, a similar situation, we have uh, almost 50%, more than 50% we have to import LNG. So therefore our dependence on this alternate fuel or alternate source of energy uh, is, is so huge. An alternate source of energy so far has been, let's say, the petroleum products including the gas and I mentioned to you the other day from India Energy Forum I have recently taken over as the president of India Energy Forum and we have had a program on gas based economy we have had a program on coal itself uh, and people are now talking in India as well as the whole world what is the future of coal and uh, I think there is an excellent book uh, Partha has written uh, on, on coal so I think uh, with 60% of energy profile constituted by coal in India, we have to introspect whether we have done enough. Maybe 40 years I have been in the, in the energy sector. Before that I was doing some other work. Of course, again in related sector only where coal is important, that is the steel sector. Now, in these 40 years, 50 years that at least I have seen, have we tried to think over the issue of uh, climate change and climate change also has been under on the agenda very serious discussions on climate change all over the world people pointing fingers on us we have been responding we have been answering that per capita co2 emission in india is is far below average etc etc but the question is that is the defensive mechanism of uh, trying to stall this problem so it has come to a stage the climate change and the, our present prime minister's commitment uh, on international forum and international uh, discussions that we will we will switch, switch to in a big way in a significant way to other forms of energy now silver lining is that solar has emerged again uh, solar has been under discussion globally for close to 60 70 years and it continued 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 on research and it's only in the last five six years seven years you can say the breakthrough has happened a breakthrough not in terms of whether solar energy can be extracted to produce power or solar energy can be used directly we have been using it but whether solar energy could be extracted for making or creating power generating power which could be affordable that has been the subject in california experience 60 years 70 years ago you had solar we in india also we had a few solar systems here and there but then they were struggling limping they were struggling all these decades 
it's only in the last seven eight years you have you have had the real breakthrough in terms of its affordability and its availability and we were talking in terms of 20,000 megawatt, 30,000 megawatt of solar. Now we are talking of 100,000 megawatt of solar. We are talking of 475,000 megawatt of renewable, including solar and let's say wind, etc. I think this is a time where we are rather too late. Too late. It's a pity that 60% energy profile with coal, and we have been too late on this subject. And we have to, we have, we, we cannot forgive ourselves because we tried BHL, power people, NTPC, coal people, uh, gasifier, any number of discussion as secretary power I used to have with all these companies. And finally, five megawatt, six megawatt power sector system in BHL 3G, whether it can, it can be brought on, uh, you know, commercial or we struggle. We have been struggling. And that is recently I've written a, a rather long article on our approach to research and innovation because Institution of Engineering is celebrating centenary celebration this year, I mean 20, uh, next year and in that they want, wanted me to write something. I thought that's, the, that's a good subject, not only for energy or power, but India's approach in general on research and innovation. I think Again, we people, all of us, me included, everybody included, those who have been in this profession, those who have technical background, or those who have any professional background. I mean, this is a subject that, as I mentioned, I repeat it again, that this is the only good source of energy apart from solar, a little bit of hydro. Hydro, we have 150 gigawatt, we have done something about at least 50 gigawatt, we have, we have, we start, we have generated, we are generating at least 50 gigawatt, but one part of it. And then you know the story in hydro, you have so much just struggle of rehabilitation, resettlement, so many people obstructing, NGOs also have their own point of view, all the things have to be taken into account. But this source was something where perhaps we could have done much, much better and much faster. Now, I am not very sure what is the stage of all these efforts. I mean, whole India has been the main. Well, India has been the main because there is nobody else. That is another problem. My I and Partha have the same view. One of the reasons of this pathetic state of affairs of coal sector has been that we did not allow anybody else to get into coal. Same as the pathetic sector of power. But at least the 2003 Electricity Act, and I can take some credit for that, at least we opened up and you have seen from less than 10 percent today now 47 percent of capacity power generation capacity is by private sector so therefore it is not the debate between public sector and private sector i mean i was part of ntpc and we built ntpc i was in the initial team of ntpc and we are proud of the uh, public sector but issue is not public sector versus private sector issue is india has always had to do so much that if we become parochial about one sector, we won't be able to do justice to the need that is there. With even all the struggle today, we are less than 1200 kilowatt hour per head per year per capita consumption. The world average is close to 3000. China is close to 2700. China is 3500, 3600. We are not talking of European countries, their climatic conditions are. But are we not able to compare with these countries which have similar situation and have moved forward? And therefore, we still needed this. But then this important sector, I remember when I was talking of coal washing, I remember people did not have the facility to authentically test its ability of washability and to what extent of washability. And I was told that Tons of coal have to be sent to Pittsburgh in USA. And in Pittsburgh laboratory, the test will be done. Coal washing, we have talked and talked and talked. We have only talked about clean coal technologies all these years. And in spite of best of targets and quite amount of pressure on Coal India and others, our result has been, outcome has been, it, I, I will not say nothing, 
but it has been very little as compared to the task and as compared to the size of the problem that we have had. Now, are we in a position now to bring this? It's very clear that coal use in the present form is going to create problem. India has no option but to continue with this for some time. I, long, I don't know how long that some time will be. It could be 10 years, it could be 15 years, till the other alternative forms will take over. You can see today that we have 200,000 megawatt of coal-based power station, 200,000 megawatt. And the plant load factor, which when I left the government, came to almost 80% plant load factor. That means our utilization was 80% of the capacity. Today, it is less than 50% of the capacity. And it has resulted into so many problems financial problems, bank problem, companies problem, they are making loss, stranded assets. There, there is a view. There are schools of thought who say, why are we so fast on solar? Because coal is coal based power generation is getting into serious trouble and NPAs and these companies are becoming bankrupt, etc. etc. I mean there is a point of view. But can we forgive coal and power people? Can we forgive NTPC, BHL and Coal India? for not driving this to a point that this state of affairs does not happen, doesn't take place. But even now, are we tightening our belt to do something? And if we do something, if we did something, and that again is like a solar story of another 15 years that this gasifier system will produce something, coal gasification will produce something, which then will not compete because that is another form of energy. That form of energy has to be competitive with other forms of energy that is available to the people. We also have a job in this country because our people, 70% of our people are not, not uh, very high on the uh, in income. And therefore, we also have a job to see that what we, whatever we produce, that is also affordable. So these are the issues. But is the technology group, and therefore in the article that I mentioned to you, I have not dealt with only energy sector, but in general, our approach to research has been that somebody else will do it for us. We have Indian problem. We have Indian sources of energy. Somebody else will do the research for us. US will do, or Europe will do, or Japan will do, or China will do the research for us. I mean, even we are, we are trying to do 100,000 megawatt of solar or 400,000 megawatt of solar by 2000. 40 or 50, whatever period it is. But then, this is not our creation. Also, what is happening on solar in 70% is good. Silver lining is that some of the companies have come forward to create the manufacturing facility. And in that manufacturing facility, again, the efforts are on to see how much of import substitution takes place so that our dependence again on, I mean, we can produce this, we can produce this, but Finally, if we have to import again in manufacturing these modules, almost 50, 60 or 70 percent. I mean, that is the state of affairs today, about 60 to 70 percent. Then again, the same problem remains. So I, I think a little bit more on technology, public sector, private sector, both. Right. In preparing this article, I may tell you, when I searched the global experience, the private sector all over the world, they take this as an important agenda to innovate, to research, and bring out new things. And that is the story of successful economies. In our case, private sector has been equally lax on this, indifferent on this. I wouldn't blame, let's say, pharmaceutical has done something well. Little bit of effort has happened in our nuclear, but nuclear is, is marginal. Nuclear capacity today is hardly less than 2%. And I don't see it will ever take a, a figure of 10% or 15%. Or even if it takes 10%, that's a small number. So I think uh, we have to rethink, rethink very positively, very strongly, uh, rather than debating uh, what to do, not to do, and all. Because this, I, I have been part of these debates for as, as long years as as many years as I have been in this sector. And it's only a story of this is a good thing. This is a clean coal technology. It will substitute that. It will substitute this. Nothing significant has happened so far. I think these are my observations. Thank you very much. Right. Uh, Mr. Shai, please stay with us. Thank you for your comments. Um, uh, we uh, request you to take on the uh, uh, role to steer the discussion as well. Uh, but I would like to come uh, to uh, Mr. Anand Chaudhary, Managing Director of Air Products. Uh, um, um, 
uh, Mr. Todia, you've heard some of the speakers. You've heard uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Partha. You heard Mr. Shahi. Now, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Shahi is saying that you have a target. That's great. Uh, and you know, uh, you no, know, we don't have the time to keep talking anymore. We have to walk the talk. But the whole question about indigenous technology, or even the uh, the availability of technology to do this quickly and in a good way. Uh, is that really a question mark? Air products have been doing this for years and has presence all over the world. What would you like to say here? So thanks uh, and good morning, everyone. Uh, I think Mr. Sai uh, touched upon some of uh, really critical current pain points uh, for this topic. But before I uh, go into uh, those things, uh, I would like to say uh, that uh, for this topic, let's talk in two parts. Uh, one is uh, coal gasification. Uh, the 100 million tons by 2030 and the second part is Atmanirbhar Bharat, right? So I think all the speakers have uh, agreed or talked on a uh, point that coal gasification definitely brings end products which can be used for uh, higher value, whether it is in terms of uh, coal to chemical, whether it is in terms of uh, uh, electrical power, whether it is in terms of fertilizer where urea deficit we are uh, seeing, right? So. And products are uh, creating value for us. But the question remains, I think some of the questions uh, where uh, Ms. Anuradha was also talking, uh, and I think Mr. Nitin also spoke about the commercial viability of uh, this uh, coal to you know uh, chemicals or coal to electric power, etc. Now, I'm very happy to see that at least uh, the higher level strategy element uh, has been triggered by government of India. There is a target set that you know 100 million tons of coal gasification by 2030. Uh, now, this is a higher level of uh, uh, strategy statement. What I think we need in India is uh, the overarching stitching of various strat strategy element in the whole value stream of coal to chemicals or coal to electric power or coal to fertilizer. Right. So this whole value stream needs to be carefully evaluated and. Uh, the strategy elements uh, needs to be carefully stitched and further spelled out to make this project commercially viable. I think one of the speaker also talked about, you know, it all depends on at what price coal is coming, right? The whole story is around how we are uh, uh, putting a coal costing in this uh, whole value chain. So I think this is one uh, topic which uh, I, I'm sure that think tanks uh, will be looking into this. Now the second part is the questions around technology and our high ash content coal, uh, which is uh, very frequently uh, heard about. Now, I think we have to learn from international experience. I think uh, some of the speakers spoke about Sasol. I would add that uh, you know uh, at Air Products we have years of experience uh, and a leading technology to provide you know full spectrum of solution when it comes to uh, gasification, whether it is a coal gasification, pet coke gasification, or residual gasification. And I can say that we have full supermarket of this gasification, which we have successfully carried out in other parts of the world. And China, we are uh, fully engaged. Uh, we have technology experience, we have operating experience, and we have uh, required EPC know-how also to build this plant. Right. So I don't think that technology is a concern. I think the concern what some of the speakers have raised is, is the technology proven? Right. So where other countries like Mr. Sai already spoke, have been doing this for years now. Uh, at Air Products, we feel that uh, with high S content also, we have required solution in place. And I think uh, many of you know that for Talcher Fertilizer Project, Air Products technology is being used, right? Here, I would also like to point out that uh, uh, the volume what we are speaking, 100 million tons of coal gasification, uh, it, calls for huge investment. And that's where I think some of the apprehensions are coming in terms of technology uh, capability and et cetera, right? So the world has moved. Uh, other part of the uh, world has moved into different contracting uh, mode where they are de-risking uh, uh, this risks uh, in terms of technology or in terms of investment also. And at Air Products, uh, we have been repeatedly uh, uh, you know, reconfirming our commitment that we are ready to invest into this gasification journey of India, where we will bring the capital, we will bring the technology. We, what we expect is we get the coal, we process the coal in our facility, which we will set up in India and give you the end product. Now the end product could be anything, uh, right? So 
we have full spectrum of solutions available and we are de-risking the whole uh, you know uh, risk on the government part right so i feel that with our you know, 750 uh, plus plants worldwide uh, leading technology experience operating experience uh, uh, sustainability is always at the core principle of air products what we have been doing for 80 years and we have uh, you know uh, uh, repeated this uh, you know or implemented this principle across the world in uh, many of the countries uh, where our clients have taken advantage of our innovative technologies and you know we have helped them in reducing their energy consumption increasing their productivity or reducing the emissions which is the problem of current uh, world now this is the first part on coal gasification can it lead to atmanirbhar bharat of course, this could be one step towards Atmanirbhar Bharat, but uh, like uh, Mr. Sai was saying, we are late. Uh, when we are talking about coal gasification, uh, the world is moving into renewable segment where we are talking about clean energy and green hydrogen. Again, happy to share that we have already commit uh, committed an investment, huge investment in the city of Neom in Saudi Arabia, where we are going to build a totally carbon free uh, green hydrogen plant which will be used for you know uh, mobility uh, in transportation right so world is moving towards this and when i look into india the required ingredients whether it is solar whether it is wind whether it is uh, water sea water everything is available in ample right so i think we need to move with speed uh, we need to think about innovative uh, contracting models uh, uh, i think the whole conventional uh, you know lump sum tanky a contracting mechanism is creating, I think, some, uh, you know, apprehension in the mind of people that if the investment is made and if the things don't turn out, uh, it becomes a challenge, right? And that's where uh, companies like Air Products and some others come into a picture. They offer technology, we offer uh, investment, we build the plant for a country and, you know, provide you the end products. Now, on the Atmanirbhar Bharat, again, uh, I will go back to Mr. Sai's comment that these are huge uh, plants and one of the speaker in yesterday's session uh, from Reliance, I think, also mentioned that 100 million ton coal gasification, probably India would need uh, similar 10 uh, gasification complex, right? Now, you imagine one gasification complex is bringing a lot of uh, boost to economy in terms of direct, indirect employment. I Just to give you some uh, figures that one gasification plant when it is getting in execution at construction site, in peak can bring employment to about one and a half lakh people for those 18, 20 months, whatever construction phase is going on. And when one gasification plant is in execution, I have seen uh, when Reliance was doing, all the fabrication shops starting from Jamnagar to Ahmedabad to Baroda, uh, moving to Hajira, and then going further to Wapi and Mumbai and Pune, uh, going to South, uh, Kointhur and Chennai were flooded flooded with the you know, order. So this is all creating a huge uh, employment opportunity. Now, uh, some of the questions will be uh, when the technology is coming from outside, uh, are we able to uh, create Atmanirbhar Bharat? Yes, because I am I, of the firm believer based on the experience what we have in air products that India can offer, I think, large part of this gasification value stream out of India. And happy to share that uh, you know we are geared up in India, uh, and for that we have already set up two EPC execution center in India, in Pune and Vadodara, where 750 plus qualified and experienced professionals have been already working on some of the large mega uh, gasification projects which we are doing for you know global clients. So you'll be surprised that the whole engineering is coming out of India. And major sourcing also, we are you know encouraging and we have been successful in last two, two and a half years to get out of Indian market. And this we are doing for global uh, players, whether it is in China, Middle East or Southeast Asia. So when this can happen for those country, obviously when we have our own plants, we can definitely source, engineer and construct major part of this uh, you know whole value stream out of India. Right, so these are my thoughts on uh, this. And definitely, uh, this can lead to Atmanirbhar Bharat because it is bringing energy independence, uh, energy security, right? Uh, the commercial viability, as I said, uh, the whole value stream needs uh, overarching strategy where uh, the uh, components are connected and they are not working in isolation. 
and also the contracting model where you are you know uh, de-risking uh, all these uh, apprehensions thank you right uh, thank you mr chaudhary for your comments uh, i'd like to come to uh, dr clifford malik uh, dr malik uh, what do you think uh, for india uh, how do we have a button cold so now that uh, there is a focus on gasification when i come to the end product what what would be uh, best for the kind of coal we have in india which is like high ash coal uh, one of one of the reasons i think you've asked me here is because of my background in underground coal gasification and over the years uh, we've learned a lot about how to do it properly and uh, there's been some very stable successful uh, productions um, that we can look at now but one of the things for india is that the underground gasification technique actually deals extremely well with high ash coal and that's one of the reasons why india should be seriously looking at underground uh, gasification because it uh, the technology so suits the characteristics of the coal which uh, sometimes causes a bit of a problem in some of the uh, more conventional surface facilities but uh, the uh, gas you get from underground gasification it's a slightly different composition but it is no problem to the chemical engineers to when they are doing their synthesis into uh, the whole range of available products and but in addressing the 100 million ton target uh, people can say well how does uh, underground gasification uh, face up to such a very large challenge now to understand is that an underground gasifier is constrained by its shape and the amount of gas which you inject into it and the, it, there is a real limit uh, to the optimum production of a single gasifier underground and that uh, production is very dependent on the on the pressure of the gas which is dependent on the depth that you're operating so that for a typical uh, underground gasification production unit at 200 meters it produces about half a petajoule of gas energy a year but that same design operating at a thousand meters depth will produce uh, eight petajoules of syngas energy a year and that is and that size has to be the size which is used for optimal production so when you're talking about very large uh, production targets you have multiple underground gasifier units which all look the same they are simply developed uh, beside each other parallel so you get a field of gasifiers of the scale which is appropriate to those conditions and so if you take um, in the, the case of deep gasifiers and if you have uh, a project with 50 of those gasifiers they're actually gasifying 20 million tons of coal a year which would produce over 7,000 tons of ammonia after you synthesize it into product. So, and it's quite feasible that for a, a good coal deposit, that you could have 50 um, gasifiers operating simultaneously, and the, each gasifier's life uh, varies between two and 10 years, depending on how hard you are pushing it. So it, uh, it's clear that if your target's 100 million tonnes, uh, there, is, there is significant potential for underground gasification units to uh, be contributing in, the, in a real and, and substantial way to that. And I guess my final throw is that if you're doing this underground, uh, you have avoided a very large upstream cost of, of the uh, plants. Um, so that's it. My uh, suggestion is have a think about underground gasification and see where it fits into the Indian model. All right. Uh, thank you for your comments, uh, Dr. Mallet. Uh, 
I would like to come uh, to uh, Mr. Rahul George to make his comments. Uh, um, Ms. George, uh, you know, uh, we heard uh, Dr. Mallet talk about underground mining. Uh, it really hasn't happened on a wide scale in India because, you know, coal was closed. Uh, it, it, there were many restrictions, high taxation, it wasn't growing. So obviously a lot of investments did not come into technology. Uh, we did, we do largely open pit mining. Now, um, we have a target of 100 million ton, uh, tons of gasification. What do you see the road ahead? Do you think the target is too ambitious? Uh, can it be done? Can we do it quickly? Because, you know, coal gasification, the time is now. There are many comp uh, competing technologies uh, of low carbon or zero carbon energy sources. What do you think about this? Do you meet the target and can it be done? Uh, thank you and uh, very good morning to everybody. Uh, I'm actually filling in for Mr. Roger, who was supposed to be here. Uh, unfortunately, he's uh, traveling and he's in a remote area, so he has a bad connection. So I'm uh, filling in for him. Anyways, coming to uh, Dr. Mallet's uh, underground gasification. See, there was a project in India which, was, uh, which happened in West Bengal. It was the underground gasification project, but uh, some problems were there, maybe because of the, uh, you know, the composition of gas which was uh, required. It was not able to uh, meet those requirements. That's why that uh, uh, that project, uh, you know, was basically phased out. Now, coming to the uh, other part, is uh, we 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 need to understand one thing which is very important here. Gasification has a wide value chain. You can do a lot of things with gas. Once you make the gas, you can make urea. You can you can do uh, you know you can do synthetic natural gas. You can do power. You can make steel. One most important thing which we overlook is you know usage of this gas as a heating fuel for the industry. This is where uh, we are working in. And, uh, you know, I will be very happy to tell you that in India, the gasification projects that are there, which are specifically for this application of heating, are consuming roughly around 50 to 60 million tons of coal, probably in those 10 years span. So we are already using this kind of coal, and just a little bit of boost is required to reach that magic figure of 100 million tons in these coming 10 years. I would like to break it into a few sections. We see that steel industry, primarily the, uh, the rolling mills, the reheating furnaces, the uh, galvanizing units, all these units consume roughly around 25 million tons in 10 years. Then we look at the aluminum industry which can take on another 25 million tons of coal. You have these huge calciners in the aluminum industry, which are presently using furnace oil or natural gas. Probably in India, India is the only country probably which is using furnace oil or natural gas for this. China is running uh, all these calciners, most of them on uh, producer gas. So that is one area which we need to look at and introduce this gasification. There are technologies for that, and we are working on them. My paper, which is uh, in the second half, uh, deals on that. So that will be an interesting uh, subject. Then another aspect is, uh, you know, the gasification uh, industry was completely shut down in uh, the Morbi area. Reason, because of the pollution uh, issues that, that were raised. See, the, the, the answer or solution is not to stop the industry. The solution is to find the correct technology which is environmental friendly. And we are 100% sure that once these technologies are incorporated in the existing systems, these gasifiers can be made to run on this technology. We have seen, you know, super developed economies like USA during the time of uh, Bill Clinton, they had, uh, they had stressed on clean coal technologies. But eventually they came up with shale gas and that, that was a little, you know, that took a back seat. So 
what I feel that, you know, the future of India for gasification is extremely bright. And for the heating uh, purpose of gas, this this has, has to be looked at and it should be, you know, technology should be introduced and it should be implemented, which should be environmental friendly. And we, we should not overlook or, you know, we should not oversee this section of the application of this gas. This is my take on this. Right. Thank you so much uh, for uh, giving us uh, your views, uh, Mr. George. Uh, Mr. Chai, now you've heard our participants talk about, uh, you know, where they see the challenge. Now, um, to your mind, what's the way going ahead now? You've heard our, uh, uh, our panelists speak. Do you think um, this target is a realistic one? Do you think it is as well to gasify? Because, you know, gas, the same gas can be put to many uses. Uh, after all that you've heard, how would you like to, you know, put in your comments now? Mr. Shai, I request you to please unmute yourself and speak. Can you can you repeat your question? I didn't get actually. So the question is now that you've heard all the participants speak, uh, how do you view this? Uh, do you think uh, that you know this target is going to be met? Because uh, uh, Dr. Marat spoke about underground uh, gasification. We haven't done a lot of underground mining, but now if you know the, the sector is opened up and technology comes in, we may you know move pretty quickly. Uh, and uh, we heard uh, Mr. Nitin talk about you know how chemicals you, you know can be created from that zinc gas. So after hearing the comments, what would you like to say? You see, the I, the the little bit that I picked up from the last two speakers' points of view, and uh, most importantly the first after I spoke, uh, that still there is a chance for India to use, to deploy this technology. Commitments in terms of saying that, uh, I, I, as I mentioned to you, though, while I was writing that piece, I did some amount of uh, the past uh, records of uh, when, what type of commitments were made at what level in the planning commission in the government of India, even before I came on the scene in the government, in the Ministry of Power, of course, as I said that uh, right from 19, uh, late 70s, I was already in NTPC and other places. So we have been talking this, talking about this. So I was encouraged to, to, to hear, I think, is, is, it, uh, is it Roger? I mean, I mean, who spoke on this subject, that there, certain things are being targeted to be completed. It will be very important because now we have entered an energy field today where really the competition is at play. Even gas prices have, LNG prices have reduced. Solar has made a big difference. So I think uh, it will always be a challenge and we will be happy. In India, Indian government, Indian economy and professionals like us in energy will be very happy because we possess, uh, as I mentioned to you, in our basket of energy profile, 60% uh, plus of, it, uh, of coal. So if a more benign use of coal with any technology is, is done, the issue would be, have we come to a stage that the emerging scenario of competitive prices, because here again, if we have to be far away from the, maybe little bit of support from government will always be expected and I hope would be given also. But then if it is too too much off the mark, then it becomes a problem. <laughs> right. If you see that there are people who can buy power at some, and power will continue to be a major user. Even in gas, mm -hmm. power and heavy fertilizer. Even today in the gas, power and fertilizer. City gas distribution system, etc. etc. is there, but they are the they are the bulk buyers. Economy of a scale of India can be on any technology development, on any technology development. Right. India provides an economy of a scale, and that economy of a scale for gasifying system could be certain area of industry in chemicals, power, fertilizer. Now, they have the present choices today. As I said, that coal is becoming, 
I mean, under pressure, not, it is not under pressure, it is a disaster. The coal, whether coal will be looked upon in the future for capacity addition is an issue. Unless we close down large number of power stations, today we are not justifying any new power station. So some right. power stations will be. I think we, it is a challenge for technology developer and we will be, we will love to see, as I will be very happy that what is happening in Pune and some other places that point was made. I will be very happy that it comes in the in the zone of consideration, maybe a little bit off the mark, uh, which which definitely for climate change people will accept. India should accept because India has this. Otherwise, we will have to import many things. So therefore, keep the solar. You see, till till the other day, two years back, we were saying solar is, has difficulty because in the evening it is not there. There are many states which are finding the solution: solar and wind together, solar, wind, and hydro together. Is getting the solution for 24 hours. Right. Uh, for 24 hours, already tenders are out. I think that is the pressure that our technology developers will have to see. And therefore, commercial aspects, not too commercial, but a little bit of uh, positive consideration for this technology development definitely should come. We should approach, we will approach the authorities that a little bit of consideration should be there. Otherwise, mm -hmm. this huge reserve of uh, energy that India has would be a waste. And right. I will have to leave now. I will have to leave because I have another meeting. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity even to comment on, on a point that has been made. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mr. Shai. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we have run a little over time, uh, but uh, we have a few questions and we'll try to take up some of the questions that have come up. Uh, I'll hand over the mic uh, to uh, somebody who's asked the question. Uh, Mr. Daman Balia has a question. Uh, I'm just waiting there. If he, yeah, Mr. Valia, please go ahead and ask a question. And please uh, tell us the speaker to whom you're asking the question to. Uh, uh, well, my question is in general. And uh, I'm Damon Valia. I'm calling here from USA. I've uh, been here for 50 years working with coal. Uh, and uh, I really commend uh, you know, the India having taken this uh, set forth a vision for 100 million tons of coal. Uh, to be utilized by two th uh, 2030 through gasification or whatever other means. And it's really the last frontier for coal. Because if what is India your question, can, Mr. Valia? My question is, a, what I have seen in the last uh, yesterday and even today, you know, we, uh, most of the talk is about the same old technologies which have failed. In USA, they are failing in China, they are failing in uh, in uh, a, a Sassol plant was built because they had no other choice. So India has an opportunity to look at completely differently to utilize these goals. And that's what I would like to share with you. If you will give me a couple of minutes to explain, because we have okay. a- We're running short on time, sir. So could you concisely tell me your question? So okay. we put it over the panel. All right. The, my question is how India will get, get over these uh, fixed pain points. Uh, number one, the fundamentally, <laughs> the oil prices continue to be, uh, you know, shuttled back and forth. The real cost of oil production, 70% of the oil, and with that price of the gas goes down is, you know, about $3, $3 to $5 per barrel. So how is India going to uh, create a gasification technology in this continuing environment? Number two, as some of the other speakers mentioned, that the solar and these other things are now becoming comparative with coal. Number three, this whole in increasing issue about the environmental impacts, the carbon issue. And the fourth is a bit, uh, and, you know, I have not seen much discussion, but many of the institutions have decided that they are not going to invest into coal. World Bank, your own uh, government, uh, the Ministry of uh, Environment and the Forest, they have made a decision that they will not support any use of the coal in India for under the Green Climate Fund. So that is my question. And if you want me to give you an answer, I will give you the answers. If not, you can take a look on my website. All right. So, Mr. Valia, uh, we'll uh, put this question to the uh, speakers. Um, okay. um, so, uh, Mr. Uh, Karvekar, would you like to uh, you know, answer this question? Because uh, whatever technology or whatever a path forward we take. We have to see what are the competitive competitive sources of energy. Now, uh, Reliance has a gasification using, uh, plant using petrol. 
uh, and uh, your operations have been contingent to uh, the international prices of gas as well. So uh, in business cycles, when prices go up and down, how do you decide on what is going to be the best way forward? Yeah, I, I think I, I know where from where Mr. Daman Walia wants to lead the talk with his some different technologies. But I would not like to get into that because it's a deep topic. Uh, but I can share our experience of Reliance Trade Corp. We have been operating and we have been sustaining even with $2, $3 gas prices with our operation. Yes, that requires a uh, real mega scale to become a competitive uh, uh, with such low energy prices. But yes, it is possible to do. That's why we, what I was telling that planning at 100 million ton coal gasification, you need a really good uh, homework and real good planning to consider all these aspects to have a sustained uh, development. But I believe it is possible from industry mm -hmm. perspective. All right. All right. Um, um, we also have with us uh, Manish Meena, Assistant Manager, Cold Preparation at Sambalpur, uh, joining us uh, to ask his question. Um, Mr. Manish Meena, if you can hear me, please go ahead and ask your question. And please also mention uh, the speaker to whom you want to ask the question to. My question is to Mr. Patra, sir. Partha, sir. Yes. yes. Sir, my question is that we want to gasify 100 million ton coal and Coal India is also targeted to achieve 1 million ton coal production. As we don't have end use of the product produced from the gasification, I feel some oil and power sector should go for gasification as they have end use. So I want to know your view on this thing. You see, Coal India has already gone into a consortium approach with uh, Gas Authority and uh, RCF to build the Talcher fertilizer plant uh, using yes, coal. Sir. That is basically yes, coal sir. gas fiction. I think more such projects yes, will sir. come. More such projects are likely to come. And a part of the target for 100 million ton gasification will be done by Coal India in, in conjunction with other PSUs or other private companies, whatever. Uh, through a consortium approach that is that is quite uh, visible once the talcher thing succeeds and uh, there, are, there are some others which are coming up if they succeed this will become a, a sort of a pattern that's what i expect all I right know. right sir thank you so much uh, for your answer uh, we have uh, update the body go ahead and ask a question yeah uh, good morning Good morning. I'm a, Please yeah. go ahead and ask the question. My question is a very, not very uh, tricky. It's very simple. 100 million uh, gasification by 2030, government, uh, all the panelists first. Uh, I want to know whether it's a really target of the government or only waste of the government. Because. Sorry. Uh, what is your question again? The 100 million. Gasification by 2030, it is really a target or wish because if you start today, I don't think you can put so many plants in 10 years. Culture is coming for the last six years where everything was available, land was available, infrastructure. Hmm. All right, let's, uh, let's ask Mr. Jordia. Mr. Jordia, and, uh, air products. Um, Air Products has many operational plants across the world. I think 750 of them in different technologies, right? Such an ambitious target uh, that the government has set. Do you think it can be done in 10 years' time? Yeah, so as I mentioned in my uh, uh, part, that uh, I think the target and the initial work has been done now. Uh, the I think the gentleman himself said that Talchar has been, uh, you know, uh, deliberated and worked for six years. So initial is uh, initial. Lot of deliberation, etc., has been done. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, I think some of the uh, uh, ingredients of this strategy needs to be stitched together to help this uh, end use uh, 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 becoming commercially viable. Let me put it that way. When it comes to executing this large projects, uh, what the uh, question has come in ten years period. 
uh, we feel confident at air products that with having all this experience uh, of operating plants as well as technology and building this large epc projects uh, we can execute right now we have been executing multiple gasification projects of this nature across the world right so if it comes in india we are all geared up to contribute into this growth journey all right uh, can, I, can i compliment that yes sir patch sir Okay. See, I think it's a very <clears throat> interesting question. How do we reach 100 million? All that we have been discussing so far, other than Dr. Clifford, mm -hmm. we have spoken about what is essentially surface coal gasification, gasification in the surface. But without underground coal gasification coming in a in a decent way, at least if not in a big way, I think the target will be very difficult to achieve. And fortunately, we have today certain blocks where we can't mine. Because the because the top crust is hard rock, mm -hmm. and below that it is one of the largest coal reserves in the world. We don't have any idea as to how to really go ahead doing the mining. These are the kind of blocks which are fit for underground coal gasification, and you you can straight away access something like 700 to 800 million tons of reserves, but at a depth of 850 meters. And at that depth. I think the issue of you know uh, this uh, contamination, water body contamination, etc., which are the risks associated with underground gasification, tends to be much less. So I think we have to take up one, two, three, or four large blocks which mm -hmm. are at great depths, cannot be mined by surface, cannot be uh, coal cannot be mined out, where we should go for underground gasification. And in underground gasification, since you are avoiding the cost of mining, cost of huge investment for mining, etc., maybe it will be cost competitive. So right. India should start looking at underground coal gasification seriously for okay. a couple of these kind of special blocks. We'll move on to the next question, um, and we'll ask uh, Narendra Tinghotri to go ahead and ask. Hello. Yes, Narendra. There's a lot of noise in your background. Please keep your question short. Uh, yeah, yeah. So my question is, uh, <coughs> Partha sir. My question is that uh, uh, gasification process is uh, required a lot of uh, capital investment. So my question is regarding that case because all the big players, big uh, big corporate giants, and uh, these are the maybe highly involved in uh, uh, set up the plant for the gasification, uh, like uh, government of uh, India or maybe some big sectors. So, uh, so for a medium uh, the, the player. In, in in terms of the finance, how they can put uh, uh, or think about the investment in the gasification side besides the other natural gas or other things, uh, the capital investment is almost one third of this uh, uh, this one. And the IER also is uh, around five to six year for normally ammonia and other plant. And second question is uh, this one, ke, like Japan is already uh, trying on atmospheric label uh, ammonia production, uh, fertilizer production, ammonia production from nitrogen and uh, hydrogen from green. So in the within maybe five years, the technology will come. So how the talchar and other fertilizer plant will cope up this uh, such type of uh, uh, new development, the technology side. So, right. Thanks for your question, Narendra. Partisan, if you could answer those questions. I won't be able to take up the second question. I am not a technology guy, so I, I, I'm not sure what's happening in Japan. So somebody else will have to take that. So as, far as, as far as the investment is concerned, you see, yes, these are capex intensive investments, no doubt. And unless you have a tie up of finance and the viability is established, if the viability is not established, it will be difficult even to tie it up. It has to be through bank loans as well as equity infusion and all that. And it's a commercial. I mean, there is the government support could be only at the policy level. It is very um, uh, um, unlikely that government will come up with fiscal incentives in a big way, excepting for maybe, you know, uh, giving you a waiver of the GST compensations. Is that the maximum that you can ask for? Because that, that originally came as a clean energy says. And since these are clean energy initiatives, there is a strong argument in favor of that, that waiver of that particular thing. But beyond that, I'm, I don't think uh, any further incentive, other than normal industrial incentives that, that are given by states, etc. Nothing will yeah. be available. So within yeah. that, it has to be viable. So you, you have to tie up. And if you if you are capable of tying up, of course, you have to have your certain amount of deep pockets to do that. Uh, I mean, it is not really for the MSME sector to get into these kind of things. Right. Uh, Mr. So, Tordos, would you like so, to... 
ஒர்க்கிங்ல what would you like to say mr jordan so uh, i would say that we are running out of time when it comes to uh, this whole gasification story uh, world has moved other countries have moved we have spent i think enough time as a india uh, think tanks to study what other countries have done so this whole question around technology uh, apprehension versus our high ash content in coal uh, needs to see a starting point culture is one starting point uh, and that's where uh, you know i was mentioning that uh, india needs to look at innovative contracting model uh, one of the gentlemen was talking about huge capital investment which this kind of projects are asking for so i would say that there are uh, you know technology providers like air products available who are willing to you know, offer this uh, proven technology operating excellence and on top of that we are committed to bring this multi billion dollar investment in india we will free up the indian government capital we will invest uh, into this projects uh, we will provide technology we will operate the plant we expect coal we process the coal and we give the end product so we are uh, de risking the whole value uh, you know stream of this uh, gasification story so it's a time before you know uh, the world moves to green hydrogen and all this clean energy uh, it's a time to use the abundant coal reserves what we have in india Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chaudhary. Yeah, right, this is the time. If not now, then perhaps uh, never will we be able to use uh, what we have, our own resources of coal. I would like uh, to thank uh, all our speakers for joining us today. Um, I think uh, Anuradha Ma'am had to drop off uh, because of uh, some technical issues, but uh, Ms. Anuradha Ganesh, Mr. Bhatt Bhattacharya, Mr. Nitin Karvekar, uh, Rahul George, Dr. Kifort Mallet, and um, Mr. Anand Jordia, thank you so much uh, for uh, coming uh, to this uh, platform and sharing with us your insights and your uh, views on the kind of strategy we need uh, to gasify 100 million tons of coal in the next 10 years. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, we'll now take a short break and we will reconvene in another 5-10 minutes uh, to take forward some of our technical sessions. Uh, so do use this opportunity, grab your coffee, network with your peers, but come back again. another 5 10 minutes see you then thank you thank you thank you, thank you.